All right. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just praise you this morning. And I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit working in us now. As we purpose to open our hearts and our minds to hear from you. We know that your words are spirit and they are life and they are life changing. So Lord, we open up our hearts to receive that life changing word, wisdom, and life to us now, Father. We thank you that you are faithful to watch over your word to perform it in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, does anybody know what we've been teaching on? No. <laughs> okay. I guess I need to review a little bit then, don't I? Yeah, we're on the, the main subject of eliminating doubt, and we've been coming against a religious doctrine that has been in the church and running, I would have to say, running rapid with many Christians. And, and that is the phrase, God is in control. Because, you know, unbelief, doubt is unbelief, am I right? There, there really isn't anything such as non-belief because you are believing something. But you can be believing the wrong things and it still be under the classification of unbelief. Because it is wrong believing. And, and that doctrine is very much contrary to the word of God. Now, if you're talking about the big plan of God, you know the big plan? Yes, his plan will come to pass. But we're talking about our everyday, daily lives. He is not in control of our everyday, daily lives. Anybody remember Deuteronomy 28? De Deuteronomy 30? <coughs> Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, talks about the blessing. If you choose, if you choose to put God's word in your life and to walk in obedience, the blessing will come on you. Right? right. He would be in control of the blessing, him doing his part in releasing that blessing because you're in a possession to receive it. But you can also choose to reject that and what? You Then what? The curse comes. Now who's in control of the blessing and the cursing that's going to happen in your life? You are. There are two things uh, I shared this last week, and I found it very interesting. I've been interesting because I've been meditating on it ever since the Lord gave it to me. And I made this statement. There are two things that the enemy uses to keep, his, keep people in bondage. Number one is deception. Number two, it would fall under that because God has given us instruction on this and that is your diet because if you if you eat the wrong stuff you are violating natural laws and guess what you've opened the door for the enemy to come in and keep you put you in bondage is that right yes. I mean if you want to sit around and eat bonbons and ice cream you're breaking a natural law that you need nourishment, things with nutrition in it, and guess what happens? Next thing you know, you're in bondage. Right? Now, I'm not preaching diet. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> because you have the Holy One on the inside of you who can teach you and show you all things. Right? It's when we ignore Him. Now, you know what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. Right? I, I'll use an example. I used to be very ignorant concerning diet. I'm not saying I'm an expert now, but actually I could. And the enemy actually had me in bondage, and I didn't know it. 
Some of you, I, I think I shared with some of you, I had suffered from a number of things. Migraines, very severe migraines, constantly. Consistently, let me say. Consistently. And I began to have traits of diabetes. Anybody know what that is? Ever heard of it? Is that a blessing or a curse? It's a curse. And anyway, now I'm still spiritually dense, ignorant to a lot of things. And uh, I began to cry out to the Lord. Because I remember I came home one day because I would get angry. I mean, really angry. I would get angry. I'd get shaky. You know what I mean? All that crazy stuff. And I remember I was coming home from work one day and I got angry and I was mad at everything. I was mad at me. I was mad at the truck. I was angry at God. I was angry. And I just, I said, God, I don't want to be like this. Help me. And you know, he healed me. He healed me. But it wasn't very long that it began to come back on me. I'm, going, I'm talking about a few months. And it was because of my diet. I didn't know. Right? And I mean, I'm eating the candy bars and drinking the sodas, you know, and all that stuff, you know. And it came back on me. And I cried out to the Lord again. And you know what he told I heard him. He told me, get off the sugar. I, I didn't know sugar was bad for you. Like I said, I was ignorant concerning that thing. See, I was deceived. So anyway, so I began to, I just cut out sugar. And next thing you know, my healing's back. My diet was opening the door for the enemy to put me in bondage. Now, if I had continued, the bondage would have gotten greater and greater and greater. Are y'all with me? Yes. All right. So then, um, and I remember that I went down to, uh, actually, a, a couple, few of us, we went down. To, I see Dr. Colbert. I'd recommend anybody to see him. And I went down there. And this is how, how set against some of these things I was. And uh, he told me there was some plaque in my blood, in my arteries, right? And he gave me some stuff to get rid of it. Meanwhile, at the same time, he also said, the Lord told me to hook you up with Billy Burke. So, uh, so we did. And we went down there. And uh, so I contributed to two things. What's the truth do? Yeah. So he gave me some truth, and then I followed through with it. I went down. We went down. We seen Billy Burke, and Billy Burke called us up out of the audience. And next thing you know, we're all laying on the floor and everything. And uh, I know we were healed. But also at the same time, I also recognized at the same time. Now I had gotten off sugar, but I still like those salt and vinegar potato chips, man. You know the uh, the real thick ones. What they call them? Kettle cook, man. I used to, I mean, I get out in the boat, boy, I just tear up a couple bags of them. But from that day forward, I realized that was the problem. So I got out of it, man. I cut the grease out. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, but anyway, over the years, I'm just being, can I be a little transparent with you? That's been how many years ago, Chuck? Nine, ten? Years ago, little by little, some of these greasy foods have been creeping back into my diet. Okay. And I knew better. But see, that's how the enemy does. Do you know, you can be a really strong guy. And there's a great big ship sitting at the dock. And you run into it and slam it. You know you're not going to move it. But if you take the little guy and he just sits there and puts a little bit of pressure on it, steady, you know that ship will move? That's how the enemy works. Remember back in Genesis 1, he was the, he got the Satan used the serpent. Why did he use the serpent? He was very subtle. Uh, what's the word? Was that the right word? Sneaky, crafty. See, and that's how it works in your life. And he'll do the same thing with your diet as he did with me. Anyway, I went back down to see Colbert again, and he 
told me the same thing. Well, you're getting some stuff back in there. So he gave me some stuff to fix it. But you see how the enemy uses diet because violation of natural laws. People have the idea, well, you're not going to go through it your time. Like they have this thing, God's in control, that, you know, he's got a circle date. He's got a date circled and this is your time. That is not Bible. The Bible does not say that it is time for you to die. He said it's at the point of the man wants to die. And he's given us instruction how we can take away from it or how we can add to it. He's given us instruction to how we can lengthen our days, how we can shorten our days. Where was I going? Y'all with me? All right, I want to make sure you're awake. So anyway, uh, you can violate natural laws. I mean, we don't know why God took him. Let me tell you something. If you get a gun, I used this example last week, if any of you watched, you get a gun, put it to your head and pull the trigger, you're going to go whether it's your time or not. <laughs> right? Who's in control of your life? James put it this way, your tongue is the rudder. You want to go north or south? <laughs> Go over to Matthew 16. God has given us the keys of the kingdom. Do you know unbelief, wrong belief? See, I had wrong believing. I thought I could eat that junk and get away for it, get away with it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that's right. Well, that's the past. That's the past. He he put natural laws and spiritual laws, and he's given them to us to use them for our benefit. Matthew 16. Did I say Matthew 16? Yes. All right. Let me get in Matthew. I don't know how long I go. I got I am loaded for bear. You know what that means? I can keep you till two o'clock. <laughs> but I won't. Amen. But I won't. Yeah, nobody. Oh, have one say amen. All the others like. <laughs> okay, verse 18, no, okay, yeah, 18, no, 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 let me back up to 13, is that okay, 13, Matthew 18, 16, 13. Jesus came to the region of Caesarea and Philippi and asked his disciples, Who do men say that I am? That I, the Son of Man, am. Did you know that is the most important question you could ever answer? Who is Jesus to you? It makes a difference of heaven or hell. It makes a difference of life or death. Doesn't it? Who can you say he is? Is he your Lord? Is he the Christ, the anointed one that came to deliver you from your sins and the destruction of the evil one? Is he the one? Can you say that? That's the most important question you could ever answer. You know, there are millions of Christians who, well, they call themselves Christians. You cannot say that. Who will not say that? I remember one time I was talking with a guy, Jewish man. You know, there's there's some Jews that believe he was, is the Christ, others that don't. This is one that didn't. And uh, he said, and we were sitting there talking, and he said, well, I don't believe Jesus is the Christ. We're still waiting on him. And I said, really? He said, yeah. Yeah, we believe he was a good man. I said, you believe he's a good man, huh? He said, yeah. 
I said, well, that would be absolutely impossible. He looked, he looked at me like I slapped him. Because I said, I said if, if he's not who he said he was, then he was the biggest liar that ever walked the face of the earth. How could he be a good man? And I said, besides that, I have witnessed blind eyes open, cancers removed. I've witnessed cripples get up and walk. And it was all by the name of Jesus. And he had nothing to say. And he was one of the high priests. I should have asked him, where are you, where, where are you doing your sacrifices at? <laughs> Alright, so based on who you say he is. Okay? He said, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Who revealed that to him? Someone from another dimension, someone from another world revealed that to him. Spirit. It didn't come from flesh and blood. He said, my Father, who is in heaven, revealed that to you. Can you say, the Father in heaven has revealed to you, Jesus is the Christ? Amen. 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 Alright, good. We're getting somewhere. Jesus answered and said, so, blessed are you, Simon by Jonah. Blessed are you, Chuck. Blessed are you, John. Blessed are you, Mallory. Why? Because it has been revealed to you. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Lord of my life. Would it be any, is he a respecter of persons? Would it be any different for you? So you can count yourself blessed. But let me go on. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is the rock here? It's not Peter. The rock is the revelation that Jesus is, was, is the Christ. Right? Based on the revelation that Jesus is your Lord, He is the Son of God who has redeemed you from every curse, all destruction, right? Forgiven your sins, healed you of all your diseases. Based on that revelation, you've got to get it all. Remember in, in Exodus, he said, then they were take, eating the lamb. He said, eat it all. Don't leave none of it. Amen. You want to take the healing. You want to take the provision. You want to take the, the uh, protection. You want to take the building. You want to take it all. You got it? Amen. So based on the revelation of that, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. For I give you the keys not to the kingdom, the revelation gave you the key to the kingdom. Now he's given you, based on that revelation, the keys of that kingdom. Are you following me? You have been given the keys. Keys denote control. You got the keys to your car. You control where that car does, don't you? You have the keys to your house. You control who goes in, who goes out. Who do you want, who do you want to let in, who do you don't want to let in. Am I right? They also, keys give you access. You've been given the keys. Who's in control of your life? You are. You are. He said, and now he's going to begin to explain this. Whatever you bind, you stop, you forbid, you don't allow on earth, will be bound in heaven. He's going to allow what you allow. He's going to stop what you stop. Is that what he's saying? Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Can you get that? I know this isn't typical, t 
teaching Christianity and teaching, but you got to realize who you are, what you are, what God has given to you. When the curse, sickness comes on you, what are you going to do? Are you going to stand up and say, no, I bind that and I bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus? Or are you going to lay there and be passive? See, God's in control. You're, going to, you're not going to stand up and try to resist something, someone that you think is the one putting on you. Well, God put this on me to teach me something. If it's God will, you heal me, Lord. Well, you, you're already out of faith. You don't even know if it's His will. Are you going to stand up and resist someone you think is doing something to you? If it's God. If you believe God is putting something on you, are you going to try to resist it? No. See, that's wrong believing God's in control of everything like that makes you passive. You'll just lay there, well, I hope this comes to quick. I hope we get out of it really fast. Or, see, because you won't resist it if you think God's the one doing it. Well, God wants to break me and make me humble. Find the scripture for that. He wants to exalt you. How are you going to know? Well, well, if you believe God is putting something, allowing things in your life to make you a better person, how can you, where do you draw the line? How do you know? Remember the scripture over in James, over in Peter? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Where do you, where do you start resisting? Hmm? Thank you, Lord. Did you know God hates things? Proverbs said God hates things. Yea, six things. Yea, seven things He hates. Right? The beginning of not, uh, how is it? The beginning of wisdom is to hate evil. Are we supposed to hate evil? How many know the, the beginning of wisdom? The Bible talks about wisdom. In its right hand is what? Long life. Right? And in his left hand is what? Wealth and riches. The beginning of wisdom is to hate evil. Go over Ephesians. 4.26 We are to hate evil. The thing is, we perverted it and we started hating people. We've got to hate the things God hates. He put that in us. We put the capacity into inside of us to hate evil. Did you know that? And we started using it to hate other people. And hate the wrong things. If we're not hating the things that God hates, we are hating the wrong stuff. Are we to hate? I mean, look at look at how it's how it's perverted our minds. People people will get up and they get on because their anger is directed the wrong way. They will hate you if you don't do what they want you to do. They will hate you because you don't wear a mask. They will hate you because you use a plastic straw instead of the paper, man. You're hurting them turtles. But yet they'll turn around and want to kill babies. Right? See, that's been put in us to hate certain things. We are to hate. In other words, you know the word resist. I looked it up. The words resist. And the word hate. Very similar in some of their definitions. And it means to stand against. One has more feelings than the other. But it means to stand against. 
Should we stand against evil? Should we stand against sickness and disease? Well, we have people say, well, this is God's in control. I'm waiting on Him to heal me. When He's given us the keys to resist, to stand against. You know, we're supposed to hate certain things. What does God hate? He hates divorce. He hates homosexuality. He hates killing babies. Not the person, the sin. We're to hate those things. In other words, we're to stand against it. If we don't hate the right things, we're going to end up jumping on somebody's wagon. Man, hey, it's okay to kill babies, but don't you kill that spotted owl. Don't you dare wear any fur. Do you see what I'm saying? See, we've been given the keys of the kingdom and we are to be using them and standing against the evil. Are y'all with me? Are you following me? Maybe, maybe I'm stepping on your toes. I, you know, I, you know I say, as I said, if I offend you, I'll repent. If the word offends you, you repent. <laughs> And Ephesians 4, what? 26? Is that what I said? Huh? Ephesians 4, 26. Yeah. Is that the right one? Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> What's it say? Be angry. What? The Bible telling me to be angry? Is it telling us to be angry? These are words inspired by the Holy Spirit through the handwritings of Paul. What's he saying? Be angry. Yeah, be angry. But don't sin. In other words, you know, I learned this lesson. You've heard me share it before. We are to stand against evil. We are to be angry and sin not. I can be angry at what's going on in our government. I can stand against it. There's evil going on in our government. Right? It's evil going on everywhere. But I, my, I'm not to direct my anger or my hatred towards the person. We do not war and battle against flesh and blood. Those people are under the influence of principalities and powers of the air. Spiritual wickedness in high places. They are influencing those people. Even if you were to pray and get a, or whatever, get one person bumped out, someone else is going to come in and they may be worse because you didn't go to the source of the problem. Us Christians, us believers, have been given these keys. We ought to be using them. But the deception, the teaching, that, and it's come out of the church. God's in control. Well, if you think He's in control, what do you, what do you have to do? What's there for you to do if He's in control of everything in your daily life? <clears throat> I told you I've had people, I was at a meeting, this girl was dying of cancer. It was a particular denomination. That's all I'm going to say. <coughs> they called me there and asked me to minister to them because they knew I had healing, healing ministry. You have a healing ministry. So I went over there and I began to minister to them. And I'm giving her thanks, she started getting better. I think it went for like three, four weeks. She's getting better. And I'm thinking, praise God, I take the little baby steps. And one day, one evening, we were sitting there and someone said, see, they're still believing. God, God may have put this on her. God's doing this to help us. And they made this statement. They said, well, God's in control. And I, I just reacted. I said, no, he's not. And uh, that kind of hurt their feelings, stepped on their toes. 
Because they still think God's the one doing it. Well, then why'd you call me here to get God to take it off? You think I can change God's mind? He they changes not. You go back to Genesis 1. God created man in his image and likeness and gave him what? Come on. Gave him what? Dominion? He made, he made Adam and he made mankind the gods of the earth. Gave them dominion. He commissioned all the authority on mankind. You got to remember, Satan is a fallen, created being. He had a position, he had authority, but when he got kicked out, he lost all of his authority. And then when Adam bowed his knee to Satan, Satan took man's authority and used it against us. That's why when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, Satan tempted him. He said, look at the kingdoms of the earth. Look at all this. Bow down to me and I can give it to you. All this has been delivered to me. When did he get it? He got it when Adam gave it to him. But let me tell you something. Jesus did not bow his knee. He went to hell and he defeated the enemy and took it all back. And in Matthew 28 says, All authority, both in heaven and earth, has been given back to me, given to me. Now you go. He just commissioned us and put the authority back on the church. That goes along with the keys, don't it? Mark 11, 22. Have faith in God. 23 says, Whosoever would say to the mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast in his... Who's the one in dominion, and who's the one having dominion, who's the one in authority that could say to a mountain, Get out of the way? Huh? You are. The mountain could be a literal mountain, but it could be also be a mountain of sickness, a mountain of disease, a mountain of lack, a mountain of problems or situations. could be a mountain of your bad kid. Am I right? And what are you supposed to do? Oh God, help me. Oh God, please change this guy. Oh God, oh God. Oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. No. You say to the mountain, get out of the way, don't doubt your words, and you shall have what you say. Isn't that what it says? See, I've made this statement before. It comes right into play. Don't pray for the problem. Don't pray against the problem. You pray for wisdom and you pray for strength, but you come against and stand against the problem. You speak to the problem. You command it to go. But you go to him for the wisdom and the direction and the what and how to's, right? But you don't go to him with the problem. He's told you to deal with the problem. He gave you the keys. Whatsoever you bind, put the put Matthew 26. What was that? 26? 18? Put that up there in the New Living, please. Matthew 26, 18. Now, this is real Christianity. I'm telling you how to come up to your place in God, how you can begin to walk in authority, walk in dominion. Matthew 16. Where was that? Matthew 16, what? Did I tell you 18? I apologize. 16, 13, 16, 18. 16, yeah, 18. Oh, my Bible's upside down. I'm going the wrong way. 16. 18. Yeah, 16 instead of 26. Matthew 16, 18. Da da da. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Yep. 18 and 19. There you go. Is this a new living? Okay. Go to, go to verse 19, please. 
And I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. What are you permitting in your life? Let me ask you, are you permitting things in your life to turn around and pray to God to get them out? See, that's what a lot of Christians are doing. And then when things don't happen, it's, well, God's in control. I'm waiting on Him. Where is the power? According to Proverbs 18, 21, 22, where is the power of life and death? In our tongue. Where? In our tongue. Who's some? That means Satan don't have it. It's ordained by God that he has put it, his word in your mouth, giving you command, the command, and he'll back up and do what you say. If you allow it, or if you forbid it, he will back you up. Am I giving you scripture? Is it adding up in your head? <laughs> I know I've been on this subject a while, but see, wrong belief is unbelief. I can't think, if, if I just think about God's a good God, right? He's a good God. He's a good Father. But He's a he allowed that tornado to come and tear my house down. Killed my dog and hurt my kids. How is he good? If I did that to your house, they'd put me in jail. If, if anyone did half of what they're blaming God for, they would have them locked up forever. Am I right? See, it's the decept cancer does not have Proverbs 18 20. According to that scripture, inspired by the Holy Spirit, I consider it true. That's not 18. That's not it. 18. I know it's 18. Proverbs 18, right there in that area. Anybody got it? 1821. I was close. Do you believe that? Well, let's add a little bit of smarts with it. Cancer does not have the power to kill me. It's the deception that the, that that I would allow the enemy to make me think it can kill me. If someone's trying to scam you, right? They may get, because they're deceiving you, they'll get you to respond. You'll be going to doing some things. But what if someone unveiled the truth to you? The power of that deception has just been broken. Hasn't it? It won't affect you no more. Am I right? If we can get these truths inside of us, deception that the enemy can kill us would be broken. Did I say that right? COVID don't have the power to kill me. It would be that a deception that would allow, that would, then I would then let it kill me. Because I've been given the keys to the kingdom. Whatever I allow, he allow. Whatever I forbid, he'll forbid it. He'll stop it. He'll back it. Y'all look too serious. I'm putting it to you pretty straight though, ain't I? Is this true? Yes, it's true. Now, I'm not saying you won't have challenges going through it. 
Sometimes our faith gets developed with something else called patience. Any, anybody know what that word is? There's another one you don't like. It's called exercise. Let me tell you something. If you don't begin to exercise it on a stub toe, then you're going to have a big problem with cancer with to try to exercise it against cancer. Right? This should be part of our everyday daily life. Remember Jesus said, O oh, ye of no faith, O oh, ye of little faith, O oh, ye of great faith. Can you see the different levels of faith? How did they get there? See, Jesus said it many ways this way. The same measure you meet, the same measure is going to be measured back to you. What you apply, that measure is going to be applied back to you. You apply little, you get little. You sow abundantly, I'm getting tongue, abundantly, abundantly, okay, yeah. You'll reap a bunch. See, it's the same measure. You apply the word, you begin to do it. I mean, hey, I've been doing it for years. And I started with little stuff. When I found out that I had authority over pain, pain is a spirit. Not all pain, but a lot of it is. Man, I'm telling you, I began to exercise my faith. I'd be working and smash my thumb. Everybody ever do that? I exercise instead of cussing at it. Making it worse, I begin to exercise my faith. I come against that pain in the name of Jesus. Pain's going, and I heal quickly. And you know what? I begin to see it work more and more and more and more. Do you not have authority over pain? Is pain a blessing? Then it's a curse. Have we been redeemed from the curse? Simple question. Have we been redeemed from the curse? Have we been given authority? The name of Jesus is authority over all things. Right? Jesus said all authority. How many is that? How much does that leave? Does that leave the devil in a little bit? No. No. All authority. And he then commissioned it, put it on the body of Christ. All authority. I've got authority over pain. <clears throat> Sometimes I've had to exercise my authority over pain or different things for almost a year. But you know what? God's word came to pass. When I begin, you know, as you get older, things begin to change in your body. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know. My eyesight began to fade. God will disagree with me on this one. My ear, my hearing began to change. And it wasn't for the better. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> hey, so I, I knew that was not my inheritance. I knew that was not a blessing. I can't find it in the scripture. The Bible says that Joshua and Caleb were stronger at the age of 80 than they were at the age of 40. I have been born again with incorruptible seed which lives and abideth forever. I should, even though my body will age, my spirit should be getting stronger and stronger and overcoming the weaknesses of it. You with me? I'm not saying you won't get a couple wrinkles. Don't look at me. <laughs> All right, so I begin. I realized that was not the blessing. That was not my inheritance. I wasn't going. I began to resist, stand against it. And I thought, got a confession now. Charles Cap's book, as God was with Moses, so was He with me. My eyes will not grow dim, neither will the natural forces of my body be abated. So blessed are my eyes for they see, and blessed are my ears for they hear. And I begin to say it and say it and say it, get it in my heart. And every time I said it, I heard it, faith came in. I said it again, I heard it, faith came in. And I'm beginning to establish because my tongue is the rudder. Right? Out of the mouth, out of the, the treasure of a good man's heart, good things come to pass. We're standing account for every word we speak. So I'm putting in the good word. 
I'm beginning to change the direction that my body was heading. And you know, I got my eyesight back. I don't wear glasses. I don't need glasses. That's not a condemnation against anybody that does. But I'm telling you, you get to the point where you can begin to turn all this stuff around. That's our inheritance. That's the keys to the kingdom of God. No, of the kingdom of God. The key to it was the name of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. I accept him as the director of my life. And now the keys of it. And how to use it. Are y'all awake? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, y'all, you talking about, wow, I can start here, I can start here, I can do, 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 you know. Don't let confusion in. Just start somewhere. Just start somewhere and stay with it. Being consistent. Copeland said it this way. Inconsistency lies the power. Being consistent. You don't change not. You start saying it and you keep saying it. You keep confessing, making sure it's in line with the word so he can back it. Okay? You want to say what he says. He says you're blessed. He says you're healed. He said he'll provide for you. All your needs, all your desires, he'll fulfill. Right? So you keep saying it and you stay with it. Even when they face of opposition, you know, even though I could look at that sign, I'm like, I can't make it out. I kept, I did not say I can't see. I can't, didn't say I can't focus. I kept saying, blessed are my eyes for they see and my ears for they hear. And I kept saying it till finally it came like Mark 4. The seed was planted in and it began to sprout. First the blade. Then the, uh, then the stalk, then the full grain, and then I knew. There was a time when I knew that I knew that I knew. I was healed even though I still couldn't see the sign. But then I just kept, I stayed consistent. Finally, I knew it was time to harvest. You know, he said they put the sickle in, you know, and he gets his harvest. Check it out, Mark 4. Right around the 26th verse. And you go, so I did. I, I actually did the harvest. I said, bless God, man. I knew it was time. Do you know it's time to harvest? When you see your tomatoes on the vine, do you go out there and they're still green or they're pink? What do you do? You know it's not ready, right? So you keep on. You just keep on waiting. Exercise that pace. Next thing you know, that baby's right. And you get it. And that's what I did. Spiritually. I said, I take my heart, I take my eyesight right now, and you know what? Bam! I could see. It works, people. This is the kingdom of God. Are you getting it? Okay. Um, all right. That's why I say, I'm quick, I'm sharp, bright, good looking, very rich with an excellent memory and a major blessing. If you haven't heard me say it before, it's better than being poor, dumb, and ugly. <laughs> so I keep saying, I'm quick, come on, say it with me, I'm quick, I'm sharp, bright, good looking, very rich, very rich, with an excellent memory, an excellent memory. and a major, a major blessing. That's right. Can you sow some seed in that direction? Yep. Hallelujah. I want you to know, we are to hate evil. I hate it when evil comes at me. I hate it when evil things come around me. I hate it when I see evil things happening to other people. I stand against it. Some people take it wrong, thinking I'm hating the people, but I'm not. I hate the sin. I hate what, God, what the enemy's doing in their lives. So I stand against it. These are the things 
that we should be using all the time in the kingdom of God. Forbidding and loosing. No pun intended. This morning we prayed for somebody. We bound one thing up and loosed another. <laughs> Amen. We bound up the pain, the disorder, but we loosed the power of God to come into their body. Can you do the same? Yeah. That's not praying for healing. That's using the, the tools, the keys that God has given us. If I'm praying and asking God to heal me, I'm already missing the mark. Because in his heart, in his eyes, and in his mind, he did 2,000 years ago when he sent Jesus to the whipping post. You follow me? Healing. Keys denote control and they denote access. These keys give me access to the kingdom of God. I bind up that evil and I loose the powers of God. I loose the powers of the kingdom right now. And I loose the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. Can you see the difference? Amen. I'm going to wrap. Y'all happy? I don't preach myself happy today. The devil don't have anything. He's been stripped. Don't let him use your own power against you by deceiving you. That's his weapon. Deception. And I said the word diet because that's a violation of natural law. You know there's natural laws, right? You know if you jump off the building, the law of gravity is going to pull you down and it don't care how you land. <laughs> See, so you don't want to you can supersede them, but you don't want to... <clears throat> Never mind. I'm going to end up preaching some more. I told you I was loaded. All right. Are you good? Yeah. Stand your feet. Will you exercise your faith now with me? Anybody here without any problem at all? That's what I thought. Anybody here without a, a pain, an ache, a sickness, a weakness? No. All right? Just begin to exercise. Put your keys to work. In the name of Jesus right now, we come against, we stand against every evil work, every evil spirit that's working in our lives, in our bodies, in our families, in our finances, we bind you. We forbid you. We stand against you and we say, stop in the name of Jesus. Come on, you got to open your mouth. Your mouth is the release of your faith. Your, your mouth is the release of your authority. I put a stop to you in the name of Jesus. Stop, I forbid you. Thank you, Lord. Now, in the name of Jesus, we loose. The powers, the blessing, the kingdom of God right now on our lives, in our families, in our bodies, on these situations in the name of Jesus. And we command them to turn around now in Jesus' name. We shall live and not die. We shall be strong and not weak. We shall be healed and not the sick. We shall be wealthy and not the poor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you agree with that? Amen. Learn to exercise your vocal cords. <laughs> I used to be very quiet, believe it or not. But this stuff stirs me up. I get loud. I get to holler and I'm ready. I don't even realize I'm doing it. So forgive me. All right. Well, God bless you. And may his head, his face shine upon you. And keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Did you get encouraged? Yes. Did you learn something? Yes. Good, good. Because you didn't come here to get entertained. You come here to learn.